Hi there, so today I'm working actually on a sponsored fascinator. Yes, someone was fascinated by Kate Perry's fascinator and I was asked to do it and it was sponsored meaning it was paid for. So today I'm going to be showing you the molded version of Kate Perry's hat. After this I hope to do also the free form. So the items I used are uh, my Tom Tag stiffener. Then I couldn't find the mold that would give me the exact um, shape so I decided to combine two molds together. Then my cinnamon, I bought one yard. So I uh, oil beads, then nylon. This nylon didn't fit finally, so you see what I used finally. Then your celery measurement tape and your scissors. Let me tell you the measurements of the two um, diameters of the um, molds that I combined to form that shape. Now this first one is 14 inches and the second one is 9.5 inches. So I'm going to replace it like this one is upside down and the other one is facing front and I put it on top and I'm going to make use of my sellotape to seal them all together. Keep watching and learn on. done with that the next thing to do is to cover up your hat block with nylon bag now this is to ensure that your blocks don't spoil this is wood and you know what happens to wood when you keep on pouring water on it so that's it keep watching and learning Then oil it to enable ease of removal when you want to remove your molded um, hat out of the block. Okay, so the measurement of my mold was 18 that's the back to cover it so I've cut it into 18 by 18 inches that's my cinnamon and now I'm stretching them out once done I take my stiffener and I begin to rub them on the um, cinnamon now my stiffener it's a bit watery so that's why I didn't mix it it's I bought it and it was watery it's not um, normally like thick so I'm this time around I'm making use of my hand I'm not doing the deep method as you usually see me but do stay to the end because I'm going to tell you one trick that I did when I found out something at the end <laughs> all right then Okay, so now I'm placing them on my hat block and remember you place them diagonally as a knot in the same way that you place the other so that it will cover. Okay, now remember I said this is the molded version. If you look at Kate Perry's one, you can see you can see through. So it's more of like one layer, so to speak. Or even if it was not one layer, 
the two layers were placed at the same direction so it's more you can see through it more so now it's time to put my tom tags remember you have to do your north south east and west and after that you keep on doing the other <laughs> So the tip that I found out, okay, after I finished, I noticed that I had some stiffener um, sealing up in one place and forming white and getting thicker. I knew that, no, if I left it, I'm going to have white tissue stains showing around. So what I did was I took my pad, that the padded, or you can take it from, I couldn't find foam, I had padded around. So I just took that, dipped it inside water and started dipping around my um, molded cinnamon after I finished. I was okay with what I saw and so I left it to dry and it actually came out well. Okay, so now that you've got the hang of it, let's move on and take it out to the sun to dry. Your one inch thick stiff crinoline, your bias matching color to your cinnamon, your needle, you'll be needing your bed cage veil, some call it fascinator veil. What do you call it? Do let me know in the comment section below. You'll be needing your Alice band. <laughs> I put two thinking. Then thread, matching thread. And this is your seven inch weight crinoline. This one has a pattern. I'll let you know how to use that later. Then you'll be using your hat wire and my famous hat wire cutter. If you need one, this shows you that I sell. You can let me know in the comment section below and I'll get that across to you. Okay, so our mold has dried and now we need to take it off the hat block so you can either make use of a plier like I'm doing here or you make use of screwdriver or you can even use a scissors that has broken or is blunt that you don't make use of anymore the next thing you want to do is cut out the excess from your um, cinnamon base that you have molded so that's what I'm doing keep watching and learning that's done that makes it very easy for you to remove your um, molded fascinator base out of the hat block so if you still have a little extra left in your when you cut it out before you remove it from your mold you want to cut it you don't need it too long as in the excess flap underneath it doesn't need to be too long at all it should just be enough to contain your hat wire unless you want to make a different design or something okay so now of course the next step is to put your hat wire now your hat wire helps to keep your fascinator base in place so it keeps that shape that it has formed so now i've measured and you saw the hat wire cut it shoop, shoop. next thing to do is to join your hat wire keep watching and learning after that's done you know your hot what the cinnamon base the fascinator base is see-through so you need to wrap up your hot wire so that what everyone is seeing is red you're not seeing hat wire size that hat wire do rust some of them not all so what we do is to wrap it especially if you're not putting it underneath um, padded if you're using any other material so that you don't see rust showing on your fascinator or your hat you wrap it up with um, bias or trimming or anything so now i'll show you how to wrap it up now i'm using the round method so to speak i'm not using the loop method 
I brought in my pegs to help me out to make it faster. If you've gained anything so far, please do give me a thumbs up. If there's something you have just learnt, do give me a thumbs up and write in the comment section, I've just learnt something. Or you let me know what you just learnt, what you didn't know before that you have learnt. Once you're done, you take your fascinator base and you place the hat wire inside the covered hat wire inside the fascinator base. Fold up the flap a bit. and start putting it at the edges allow it to dry a bit before you close it so that it doesn't stain your fascinator and if it doesn't close when when you've done that you can put glue again allow it to dry and close to then you do that all the way around you can use your peg to help you to keep it in position for a long while so that it sticks well you cannot find any of these materials in your local store please do check the description of this video you would see amazon links you will see aliexpress links you could click on them and make your purchase or you could also click on my diy kit link and make your purchase there there's someone there to attend to you or you could contact me via my whatsapp or the diy link to shop for you you have various options so you have no excuse to make this fascinator kate perry's molded version of kate perry's fascinator once that's done the next thing you do is take your bias and then you cover the edges at the back of your fascinator base so it looks all nice and smooth now some people like to use peter sham here but i don't know why peter sham doesn't just come out smooth for me i think when the length of what you're using to go around is um the width sorry of what you're using to go around is um smaller it helps it makes it much smoother but if you do well with peter sham then ride up with ride on with peter sham <laughs> next thing i did was to place my fascinator on the um alice band now i first of all put my alice band on the mannequin head or dummy head whichever what do you call it do let me know in the comment section below okay so i placed the um, fascinator base on the alice band to get my position where i want it to be exactly and i sewed it first of all from there before i took it off to continue sewing you know that helps to make sure that you're placing it exactly where you want it to be watching and learning how i do the sewing do you always jump off before you reach the end of my videos nah nah i would advise you to stay to the end why because i always have a game challenge once a week and that challenge gives you an opportunity to attend a free class in the Vencraft Academy. Isn't that cool? So, my advice, stay to the end of this video. Aside from getting knowledge of how I made this, because I may make it in a different way. Of, I may make something that you already know in a different way and it will be much easier and better. Don't you think so? So it's good to stay to the end of the video. Gotcha. you took note of the width of the alice band that i used now when attaching when attaching fascinator holders i think i've done a uh, a video on fascinator holders which fascinator holder to use for what so you could check the description of this video you would have um, a video on the various fascinator holders that are available but anytime you want to use just check and see which one would um you know sit 
properly with the fascinator. So the next thing I did was to get a patch of, um, I'm making use of straw mat here, I think it's also called um, paper mat. I cut a piece of it and just watched the foldings and how I would use it to cover up the sewing that I did at the, as in how the sewing that I did attaching the Alice band to the fascinator base. Now I made use of straw mat because it actually almost looks like your cinnamon so it would just blend in. If you have enough cinnamon piece left, of course, make use of cinnamon piece to cover up the back. to put our bed cage fill on top of our fascinator base now what I did first of all was to chop off the edges to make it straight <laughs> Then I took it on top of the fascinator base to get the measurement of what I need to cut out. You know, I need it coming out on all edges. Now, because of that, I saw that I would need not just one layer. I would need to join two layers together. It's possible you can get a big, um, what do you call it? A big width of fascinator veil. But here, this is the width that I have. So I had to... joining two together and after i measured i realized that the length i need was 21 so what i had was that um fascinator veil of nine with nine inch width 12 21 inches length i had two pieces of that the next thing i did was to take um uhu gum and put on the edge of one and joined the other layer to it after I did that, of course, I saw some glues showing. And also, if you use B6000, because the mount is very slim, you it, it will just come out just exactly what you need. Now, if you want to know which glue is um, the best to use for which situation, check the description also of this video. You will see um, the link to the best glue to use for different purposes when making your fascinator. If I made use of um, of um, um, B6000, I don't think I would have needed to spray, but I didn't have any B6000 available. And another thing you need to do is confirm that the shade of the car paint spray you want to use is exactly the, ch the shade of um, the bed cage veil. If you see, mine was deeper. Mine was deeper, so it was obvious. But if you use the same color of carpet spray you won't be able to see it so that's what that the next thing i took the merged bed cage veil put it on top of my fascinator base and i sewed it to it but i just took you know those diamond shape that have some um, line line on it that's what i used to hold it when i was sewing it and i just showed it just in the middle <laughs> Then the other places around just like how when you're molding you do not south east and west that was what i did with my uhu gum please make use of b6000 i didn't have b6000 available and i used uhu gum but b6000 would have been the best to use in this particular situation <music> The next thing I did was to trim my fast my bed cage veil all 
the way around to form a curve and make it a bit shorter closer to my cinnamon if you've gained value from this video so far please do give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed my dear you are missing seriously you haven't subscribed ah oh, okay let's help you out just look below you see subscribe button click the subscribe button you see the bell that bell gets you notified of all my upcoming new of all new videos that i put up you need to click that also do you know why why you need to click that because most times when i launch out a video especially on wednesday it has a challenge and that challenge usually gives you a free class in my academy so i advise you click the bell button so you get notified and you'll be one of the first to watch the video and write the right answer although sometimes i do selecting random but supposing you're the only one that gets the right answer so you see that's good molded version of Kit Perry's Fascinator is to get your crinoline. I measured out 18 inches but finally I chopped up more than that so you can actually measure less. Then I started peeling off how do I put it? Drawing out the hairs from the um, crinoline on the width side. That's how actually we make our crinoline feathers. If you've attended crinoline master's class, you already know how to make crinoline feathers. If you haven't attended, I do advise you attend because you get to learn plenty tricks and how to use crinoline to make a variety of things. I'm telling you, by the time you finish from that class, if you're very creative, what you would come out with, <laughs> people will be rushing to your store. So after I did that, I wrapped it up like so and began to sew it. it on my fascinator base and sewed it to my fascinator base now please just watch carefully so you see how i do the sewing that i took another part again put it on the fascinator base to see how i the measurement that i need to cover up the shape cut it off and, and just watch how i sew it to the fascinator base again
after that i now made the you know peeled it off like so like i did previously keep watching and learning you're done with that you cut it out to the length that you want a bit the height the next thing i did was to take my um my stiff crinoline of course you know it's one inch width that is two inch on both sides and adding an extra just make it three inches so that by the time you sew it will be able to enter in that's i'm measuring what i need the material that i need to cut out the width of the material that i need to cut out and the length just make it a yard so as many loops as you want to make you can make so that's what i did then after i cut out my material i fold it on the wrong side and sew it all the way down once you're done with that the next thing to do you turn it inside out stiff crinoline if you don't fold it you won't be able to take it inside you fold it push it inside like you see me doing <music> And then these are the foldings and the sewings you need to do to make sure you have your lovely loop. Keep watching and learning. your loops this is how you attach them i made three loops in total actually use the measurement of the as in i placed it on the hat to know the measurement that i will need to but this should be 12 inches okay so 12 12 12 so i was right one yard <laughs>
I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video once more. If you want to do same, you can contact me and let me know that you want to sponsor a video. You give me the design you want me to do and I'll get that. <music>